and welcome back to <clears throat> episode five of season four of the Canary Room. Uh, a couple of quick fire episodes for you. Uh, I wanted to make sure that we got back on track um, with the scheduling the episodes as quickly as possible. So rather than fortnightly, there's only been a week since the last episode. Um, what have we got in store for you today? Well, uh, of course. Uh, we have uh, the to-do list, uh, focusing on um, largely the British, but a couple of things around humidity as well, and the importance of humidity in the breeding season. We've met all of the fifes, but we'll catch up with the fifes this week. Uh, we've got, of course, the Norwich Notebook, uh, the um, New Colour Corner as well, and the Native Diaries. Been a busy week in the bird room. Uh, must say thank you to everyone who's donated to the channel. Tony Corns, uh, Robert Elkin, and Martin Gentles. Um, Michael Burling in particular. Thanks a lot, Michael. Um, one of the things that your donations are helping to do is improve the, the uh, uh, equipment I'm able to buy. And I have just invested, thanks to all of your kind donations, I've just invested in a, a very small drone Um which uh, is um, won't won't be used around here because the place is too small. But when we get on the road, uh, hopefully in April, I'm hoping to be able to go back on the road in April. Um, when we get on the road in April, um, I'll use that particularly when we go to see some of the uh, the native fanciers. So I'll, I'll use that to to do some flies, buys of their aviaries. So hopefully uh, something a little bit different um, in in future episodes. Um, <clears throat> Lots installed today. You can probably hear the birds are in really good voice. We have eggs as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, <coughs> all that's left to say, grab yourself that copper. Sit back and as always, enjoy the show. Since we uh, will film the last episode, what I have done is um, I put a number of nest pans in. Now, um, in the in the fifes, in the uh, the Irish, uh, and in the, the new colour canaries. Um, later today on the to-do list, we'll look at, uh, at getting the, the the cages here for the the native birds ready, and, and we'll look at those um, those nest pans as well. The um, couple of the five hens have laid. Uh, I'm not. Uh, anywhere near convinced that those will be full um, we have of course already viewers regular viewers to the show will remember last year where we had uh, two buff cock birds two clear buff cock birds that both laid eggs well the five canary expert as I stand in front of you the self-proclaimed five canary expert I've got it wrong again um, uh, uh, heavily variegated yellow up here um, had all of the, the sort of the certainly the depth of colour of a, of a cockbird it's a hen uh, so it changes things slightly in the fives the um, really good uh, self green or heavily variegated green uh, yellow cockbird uh, which is the brother of that bird it, it essentially means that he's going to cover all of the dark buff hens um, and, and probably one of the light buff hens so I'll use the variegated birds on um, I plan to use them on, on two of the others anyway so I, I'll run him with four hens this year uh, maybe five but, but certainly four um, I've, uh, I've seen his uh, what was his brother that's now his sister uh, I've seen her attempt to mate. I don't think it's been a successful mating yet. It's a, it's an unflighted cockbird, so they're, they're taking a little bit of time to, to get used to what to do more than anything else. Um, but but that's that's okay. Uh, you know, I, I see a fair amount on Facebook, and Facebook is a wonderful uh, platform for being able to promote the hobby and certainly encourage it. One of the great challenges with it, though, is, of course, that... Um, you can see uh, chicks everywhere um, and that can drive a, a set of, of behaviours. One of the most important things when it comes to bird keeping is patience. You know, I've selected the pairings for my birds. Those are the pairings I'll run. I will make a slight change probably with one of the variegated birds just because now I've only got one 
dark yellow cock bird, um, you, you know, thinking I can get him over seven or eight birds is, is probably unrealistic. So I'll make a slight tweak, but I'd have made that change anyway. I would have used the variegateds with those hen birds for a round. So it probably means I'll just use them with two. Um, so it's something to, something to be mindful of. You know, what we don't know is what and how other people condition their birds. We don't know the level of light that they've got. Um, we don't know, you know, how long they've they've um, sort of been um, uh, building their birds up for. We don't know the heating that they've got in their room. So there's lots of different variables that we don't know. Just wish those people who've got eggs now all the very best and, and don't let it drive your own behaviours. You know, don't think, oh, I'm playing catch up because you're not. Your birds, and if we look at the subtlety of signs, I've got a hen here, which is just, um, just you may be able to see just in shot. She's uh, building up. She's been mated a few times now. I'm hopeful that I'll get full eggs from her. The hens to the side here, um, both have laid. We can have a little look at, at some of the eggs. This hen here has laid a, a really, really small egg. Um, which is, uh, you know, can sometimes happen. It, it won't be viable, the egg. I can tell that just by looking at it. And then next to her, she's on her third egg. Um, we've got some of the other five, certainly the two pairs of clears. They've both got nest pans in as well. They're starting to build up in earnest. No eggs yet, but they're starting to build up. That's, that's really encouraging to see. And then for the vast majority of the other five, there's no pans in yet. Um, and, and what I'm doing is I'm, I'm running the cockbirds in on a daily basis uh, and I'm watching the hens, I'm watching their behaviour. They're not quite ready to breed, so that's okay. They, they won't all come into condition, albeit they've all had, you know, the same light, the same egg food, all of those things. They won't all come into condition at the same time. And I think that's one of the things as, as keepers and breeders of canaries that, that we need to consider. Each of our birds is individual and it will come into condition when it's ready to come into condition. Worst thing you can do, try and force them down, you know, let it be gradual, let nature take its course as much as possible. And by the end of the um, breeding season, you know, hopefully like me, you'll be counting the young. So that's a little bit of a, uh, an update on the, the fifes. Um, I've had a number of questions in and, and really appreciate this all of the time. So thanks everyone who, who takes the time and, and effort to get in touch with me. Um, I had a number of questions in around the borders. Uh, they are an absentee from the Canary Room this year. A um, co couple of reasons. Obviously had you know some big success with the single pair of borders that we've got uh, and had some plans to bring in uh, a couple of really, really nice birds from Graham. Um, uh, those plans were were dependent on, on Graham's ability to, to be able to pull some birds in as well. And that didn't quite materialise. So rather than leaving Graham short, he, he'd got some absolutely stunning birds for me. I said, look, you, you know, you, you keep them there. You take the, the birds back that I've bred and uh, and we'll you know we'll, we'll play the long game with the borders so they will return at a later date so thanks everyone for asking about them first feature up today well it is of course beginning of the month it's got to be the to-do list So on the to-do list for this month, well, well, key for me really is, you know, getting the birds absolutely uh, ready for breeding. And we're going to cover off a number of points on the to-do list for March. Um, first is, is calcium. Uh, now, I use a couple of different... Um, calcium supplements uh, liquid calcium supplements with vitamin d3 now I, i'm no um uh, no chemist but my understanding is that the the d3 enables the birds to absorb the calcium um hugely important not not just for egg production but also for um uh, you know development and, and muscular development of the, of the birds so calcium um supplements is our is our first uh uh, job on the to-do list and um, I'm giving it in a form uh, in a couple of forms so I'm giving um, 
liquid form in the water uh, a couple of times a week just in the in the build-up uh, I have oyster shell grit um, in the egg food drawers as well so the birds have a, a constant supply of oyster shell grit and I'm also using cuttle fish um, which at the moment it is 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 quite difficult to get hold of in the UK um, and, and the price for it's gone through the roof um, so calcium first thing making sure that you know that the birds have sufficient calcium to, to really get them through the the breeding season the second thing on the to-do list well we're giving egg food twice a week still but in March we also offer soak seed now there's a how-to video which has been viewed thousands of times on the on the YouTube channel I make soak seed in exactly the same way uh, so though my looks may have changed a little bit since then uh, the way I make soak seed hasn't and um, so I'm offering soak seed to the birds just once a week at the moment but again that's part of the conditioning process as we get into you know absolute optimum breeding season so adding soak seed as well that variety of the diet one of the things I've done uh, normally sprout seed in the canary room it's too cold so what I have been doing is taking it in the house uh, soaking it in the garage but then taking it in the house um, and, and that sort of warmth of of the house has helped it sprout a little bit one of the things with soak seed is you don't want you know you don't want big long shoots you just want the seed to break that's when the sugars are at their highest so soak seed is our next thing on the to-do list and then we've got um Something which um, I think really need to uh, is often overlooked um, in in rooms, and that's humidity levels. Now I'm struggling at the moment. This is a, a wooden insulated building that we're in. Um, obviously, there's lots of water in the drinkers. It's cold outside still, so I'm struggling with managing humidity. I have a um, a, a humidity meter. Uh, which allow, which tells me the humidity level. At the moment, it's too high. Now, it's almost, you know, better to be too high, certainly as eggs are being laid, than it is to be too low. Low humidity can be catastrophic for dead in shells. So, humidity meters, there's a little shot of mine here. It's from, um, from Amazon, uh, not a huge amount of money. Um, but gives me, you know, gives me a reading. I do have a dehumidifier in the shed as well, which um, I will take out as the breeding season moves into sort of full swing. Because obviously, I, I don't want, uh, I don't want to be taking any, any or too much excess moisture from the air. So our, our final thing, really, on the the to do list is setting up the the British cages now there's a couple of things that we've done first and foremost we've done the flights outside um, so the flights uh, you'll see at the back of the flight I've um, I've, I've put uh, uh, an old piece of um, trellis uh, and I've covered that with um, some fur um, and I've positioned the uh, a nest pad actually against the shed wall, so it's 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 fixed against the shed wall, um, and and but it, but it's quite well hidden. I've also put another nest pad at the front of the of the flight in there. Um, so those are the flights outside. They've got the nest pads in. They haven't got birds in yet. In the main room, uh, although the birds are still some time, certainly the native finches are still some time away from breeding. One of the things that I will do is start to, to dress the cages, and I'll do a little bit of that today. Um, there's, as we can see here, there's different nest pans that I'm using. Uh, I've also started to collect some moss as well. Um, I'll treat that. Uh, I'll treat that moss um, with uh, Dr. Johnson's sterilising fluid just to kill any bugs in it before I give it to the birds. Um, what I will do is uh, I'll, I'll start to get these flights ready. So I'll start to put the different nest pans in. As I said, we've got different nest pans that we're using. So I've, I've sort of adapted a combination for the bullies. Uh, I've got pans that are used for the, um, the goldies last year. So I've given them two choices as I'm going to give all of the birds really two nesting sites now I'm not going to do them all today uh, but over the course of the next few weeks or so I'll put all of those nest sites in situ the birds have 
you know, been beaking, they've been singing, they're a little bit more active, they're still some time away from breeding, I'm sure, but um, having the, the sites in place now isn't going to do it any harm at all. So that is our to-do list for this month. Uh, coming up now, it's time for the Native Diaries. So we have our, uh, <clears throat> our nest sites in, um, with the exception of the, the bullfinches, I've, I've put two sites in, in every cage so far. Um, <clears throat> I will put a secondary site in for the bullfinches as well, just to give them um, uh, just to give them a second option really. I've still got a little bit of dressing of the flights to do, tidy these things up as well. but. Um, Pleased to report an uneventful uh, a week with the natives, so um, everything's starting to to get into some really good form. Um, caught the uh, the Norwich cockbird belting out song uh, earlier today. A little bit of footage of him here, so he's getting in in, in good condition, and, and you can just see there's a, there's a general sort of flightiness to the birds. Um, and that is an indication of, of them becoming in, in more advanced breeding condition. Uh, you know, we're in March now. I don't anticipate these birds to go down until April. I think it was May, beginning of May, before the goldfinches went to nest last year. Um, perhaps slightly earlier with the red poles. Red poles seem a bit more advanced. Um, certainly keen now that the uh, the, the flights are in there. They're, they're a lot more active and and that's one of the things with any of the birds that, that that we keep is just you know spending a bit of time studying them um and you you'll start to see the telltale signs i mean i can see as we move into the norwich notebook uh, next feature up I, I can see the norwich are more advanced and and you know in, in that's just in the last week but natives and um, bullies looking beautiful um i think i've decided that it's the green finches who are going to go outside um, in the flights i i was thinking about the uh, the bullies and um, putting the bullies out there um but i've i've seen the hen sort of picking up and and the cock dancing and getting a little bit of um activity and i just think that they've been in the in the in the shed now for four months or more so they're, they're settled whereas the green finches have only been in for a couple of weeks so i think the green finches will go outside it's still a bit too early it was minus one last night it was baltic so i'll wait until probably the beginning of april before i put them outside um Poles, well, poles are as active as ever. Um, siskins we caught on the last episode, didn't we? Beacon feeding each other. So all the telltale signs are looking good with the natives. With the um, the linnet cock, which is actually going to be this week's bird of the week. Um, what, I've, what I did uh, just in the week, I popped a wire divider in um, and I, I ran the uh, Irish cockbird with, with the hen and they, they pulled tight. No sign of any treading, but they, they pulled tight. They looked like they were, were moving into breeding condition, which is great. So what I plan to do with this pair is, um, is, is try and get the Irish um, cockbird over her first to get a, a round out of her um, as straight Irish and then hopefully at a, a, a later date as the, sis, uh, the siskin, the linnet cockbird becomes into a greater condition, level of breeding condition then hopefully I'll be able to um, to do some mini muling there. Other red pole, touch wood, he's looking good with the white fife hen. Um, so yeah, steady, steady away with the natives. As I say, you know, they're just really beautiful birds to to look at. And and as they start to come into to advanced breeding condition and they start to get ready, you know, let's keep our fingers crossed. Num numbers wise, um, you know, I'd like to get double figures with the red poles this year. There's there's three pairs. Uh, who knows? Um, if I can get any bullies on the sticks, I'll be delighted. Um, I bred last year a couple of um, of uh, goldfinches, so uh, that was really out of one one pair. So if I can get 
a couple of pairs um, sort of half a dozen or so goldies this year again I'll be thrilled the key with the natives is going to be what rears their own I have got feeders in, in the room um, should I need them uh, and, and, I'll, and I'll really talk about feeders um, I'll touch on it a little bit today but uh, had a, a message in from someone about the feeders and you know making sure how do you get them at condition at the right time so i'll cover that off in in future episodes so there are natives we've done our to-do list it's the norwich notebook fortunately uh, an un uneventful week in the norwich notebook um as I said uh, a little bit earlier in the show, you know, the, the, the birds are all coming into advanced condition. I still don't think it'll be April before the Norwich are ready to breed. Um, I popped uh, a little bit of string in just uh, earlier on today, just a little bit of nesting material, just to see how they got on. And um, you know, I was really, really sort of pleased. They were, they were beaking it. The, the white, what I've got down as a, as a cock bird in here, he, he was picking up string. Male birds will pick up strings, so that's not a telltale sign. If he was shuffling in the corner of the cage, I'd be slightly concerned. Um, I do know the whites are, are relatively difficult to um, to sex. So, you know, who knows? I, I, I could have six hens here. Um, I could have five. I don't really know. And I don't think I will know until hopefully they lay eggs at a, a later date. Um, so very much looking forward to, to seeing what happens with the Norwich this year. Um, they are getting a little bit more flighty, um, which is great. Uh, you know that that's one of the things that you want to see you want to see them active that sort of active sign shows them being in condition as i look out the corner of my eye the bully hen who's with the norwich cock has got some cocoa fiber in her beak which is a great sign he's absolutely bouncing away so she's obviously plucked that out of the nest i haven't given her any material yet maybe i will do a little bit later on um so Norwich, you, you know, they're lovely. You can see they possibly just see him out the corner and now the, uh, the cock have got in from Keith. He's, he's really belting out song, which is lovely to see. And on tune, so is the other one with the, with the bully hen. So, you know, coming into condition really, really nice. I, I'm, I'm smitten with the Norwich, absolutely smitten with them. I think they are a stunning bird. Um, if I can breed, you know, double figures, I'll be, I'll be very, very, very happy. Okay, so Norwich Notebook this week. Let's hope next time it's uh, as uneventful again. It's time now to check in on the new colours in New Colour Corner. Our, uh, our new colours have um, have really, really settled into their new cages. So, you know, in the last episode, a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of nervousness as to, as to whether or not they would. Um, fortunately, they have. Um, so, no sign of any feathers. In fact, what we've got is some nest building going on. Um, the gap mosaics at the top. As we can see here, I built a really, really nice nest, and I suspect it's only going to be a, a, a matter of days um, before she lays the first egg. Um, the uh, the others are all sort of picking up string, playing with string, um, and 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 starting to take a bit of an interest. The um, Irish fancy of of, of of sort of built a nest and then sort of semi destroyed it which, which to be honest is not unusual it's it's a sign when when birds do that that they aren't quite ready so there's an urge to breed but they're not quite ready so nothing to uh, nothing to panic about with those um still looking in you know in in really nice good shape and um looking forward looking forward to them just getting down to nest now and uh, slightly impatient and um, just picking up the point i made in the norwich notebook around feeders and, and the sort of the challenge with feeders you know it's very much around um y you'll never get all your birds in sync um they're individual and 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 you know there's different elements even though 
you 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 think and you're doing everything consistently there's always different elements that you um that you you know you you, you can't control so the, the location of the cage in relation to the light will have an impact uh, the age of the bird will have an impact their uh, genetic makeup will have an impact so lots of variables that you're uh, unable to control so um inevitably um birds will come into condition at, at different times and and there's a couple of ways to to sort of manage that what one of the things obviously we've got essentially six pairs here uh, so there's the pair of irish and there's five pairs of new color canaries um they're here in their own right so they're here because i like them and i want to breed them straight and i'd like to exhibit them so you know i've i've, I've got stock which is of um of good quality um they're also here to help with uh, the British, if necessary, if needed, uh, and uh, they're also here to help with the Norwich, if if necessary and needed, and and, and I suspect they will be. Um, so the the important thing um, with them really is to sort of try and get them, you know, in optimum breeding condition, and then if I can, be, because they are more advanced than the Norwich. Um, it will be to take a round out of them first. So I'll get that round out of them in the first instance. And then what I'll look to do beyond that round is, um, is you know, float and foster any Norwich eggs over. Uh, and we'll see how we get on. And, and, and what I might do is, and I've done this before, is, you know, keep keep a couple of their eggs in, in with them, a couple of Norwich eggs, check what's fertile, and then, um, you know, maybe put some of their eggs under the Norwich to see how the Norwich feed, and just move things around. I've had five Sreed new color, rear new colours before, so um, very much, very much interested to see what, we've, what we'll get out of them. So steady away with them. They're looking to build nests, which is great. Uh, hopefully by the time we come back in the canary room, We'll have some eggs. Time now, final section of today's show. It is, of course, it's Bird of the Week. So our Bird of the Week this week, um, it looks a little bit like a hummingbird, doesn't it? it? It's not been in show cages for any length of time at all, but it's um, a really, really nice linnet cock. Um, <clears throat> when I catch this bird up, you can see the uh, the sort of redness on the chest um, coming through, which you know, is a, uh, an indicator of, of, of breeding condition. Um, really nice bird, this. Really, really pleased to have it. Sort of not owned linnets before this year. Um, you know, be tempted to, 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 to maybe get a hen as well at some stage and try and breed them straight. But um, but for now, uh, it's part of our mule in pair. It's this week's bird of the week. It's uh, a very, very, very beautiful linnet cock bird. So that's uh, that's almost it for another episode of the Canary Room. Um, you know, the the season breeding season really is uh, is underway um so you know, some eggs some mating uh hopefully next time out we will have um some more eggs as well there won't be any chicks on the next show but uh, there'll be chicks soon enough fingers crossed if you haven't already uh, subscribed to the channel please do and if you like the video please hit the like button um asking out for questions for the next episode for question time so contact me on the comments below or through our facebook page so if you've got a question you want answering in the next show hit it down below until next time everyone take care